Hi, I'm John Termel, and this is part two of the uh, talk I gave to the Bradford Inventors Club uh, in the memorial for Mama Teresa Termel, who passed along on January the 9th, before she got to see the Mayan prophecy come true, but she knew it was on the way. So, it's kind of neat because, uh, oh, the tribes she had, well, let's face it, she was a school teacher, and here's why she was so smart. Let's say you're three years old, but you've got a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old sister. Well, you and the three and the four and the five are listening to grade one, six, and seven, grade two, do their lessons at night. And then a year later, two of you are listening to them with a higher level. And in a year, by the time you get to grade one, you've heard those answers four times. <laughs> All right? And grade two and grade three, and Guess what? That's why you end up skipping one or two or three grades because you've been forced to learn all these things so many times in advance. Repetition. So, whoa, that's why I, had, I basically lived under a logical tyrant. I could never pull a move, get away with it. She would always upthink me. Always a step or two ahead to foresee things that I'd never even thought of. Wow, you know, scary to know someone so sharp. But I understand how she could have got that way so early, being pumped by all these other kids above, listening while they're learning the right stuff through repetition. So when she got to school, she was always ace in top grades. She used to think that I was good. I got 98 in math, but she scored 100. I found out when I saw her final teacher's college score. 100 in math. Good for her. She never thought she was very good at math because she was better at French, you know, literature stuff. Mom, a hundred in math, that means something. Who cares about literature? But anyway, yeah, Mama was a Sharpie. And she took really good care of us as best she could. We were really poor for uh, one time. Well, anyway, she got a new job. Immediately, she bought herself a life insurance policy and a health insurance policy. And a couple of years later, when she got sick, Reno's disease, Bam! She started to collect. It paid off. Good bet. Well, then one or two years in, boom, cut us off right before Christmas, hoping we can't do anything about it. You know, they say, oh, we think we, you made a mistake. We want you to reapply with all your facts again. Well, how many people are going to, A, be able to do that? B, realize they're going to say it's not enough anyway until you finally got to go get a lawyer. <laughs> anyway, we were lucky enough to go right away for a lawyer. But at least we're still no money. Here I am, fourth year engineering, and they say, well, quit school, go get a job. Well, anyway, I worked washing floors at night. We survived. And then we made them give it back because we got a lawyer. But that's the kind of stuff these dirtbag corporations can do to us and do all the time because they've got legal departments. And that's their job, right? Their job is to try and steal it from you if they can, legally. So anyway, Mama, we beat him. So she then started going south when she got Reno's. When in the summertime, she would come north. In the wintertime, she'd go stay down in Miami where it's hot. And it was coping fine for 30 foot, 71 till now. Well, no, she stopped going 10 years ago more, but like for 28, 30 years, it was fine. And then, of course, the got hit with throat cancer and the radiation blew away her saliva glands, so she's now stuck on a liquid diet, you know, and sure and stuff like that. And then, uh, then that was the uh, the foot circulation went bad five years ago. She lost her foot. And that was a horror story. And then this one just started again. And well, she was starting it on her face, a little bit of black there. And you know the rest was going to happen. Her hands were numb. She couldn't go to the can for point. And suddenly, poof! Ah, she ducked out. And I say to myself, Whoa, how wonderful that after the wonderful, fun life she had that she was in my arms until the last five minutes before she died and gone like that instead of a slow, lingering, choppy up hospital death. So it's so much easier to celebrate her life and the avoidance of her predicted doom by saying, actually, I think she knew it was time to check out. And had such a fun, useful life, life all the way to the end, that uh, I can only say, see you in the next life, Mama, and everybody who loves you will help. Anyway, by help I mean, I see the next dimensions, you know, the 11 they say we need to make the math work. I mean, we've got
got to be up there. We've got to be able to be looking down. It doesn't make sense because of the de genetics of the DNA from last month's speech, right? Anyway, that's basically it. Mama departed. She avoided a lot of pain, went out in style, and has one hell of a proud record. Let me just check my little chart here to make sure I covered everything. Oh, I got a few, few more things Mama did. Why I'm the way I am. Back, oh, 25, 30 years ago, she was going back and forth with a trailer. For some reason, one of them didn't work. Well, signs on the thing with all the flaws, you know, went and parked right in front of the factory. They came, knocked at the door, saying, oh, man, would you come with us? We'll take care of this right away. She says, no, not till the morning. <laughs> so that all the employees going in would see it. And they took all too good care of her. They sent her, either they fixed it or they sent her another, but that was intimidation. The second time was, oh, she, was, she had a Corsica. And uh, it kept accelerating suddenly. And they kept saying, it's an E-prong problem. And she thought it was dangerous. So anyway, she said, I want some, this fixed. They fixed it a couple of times. It still kept doing it. So she said, I'm not doing this. She got herself an old Ford that was going north from Florida to Canada. And they had towed the Corsica and put a big lemon on top of it, OK? All the way back to Canada to the dealer to embarrass him, to give him a better car. The guy wouldn't go for it. He wouldn't drop it. She was there like with her car every morning for a couple of weeks. They tried in court. They made the gap no news about how the ladies there are mad about her corpsica. And uh, so anyway, the dealership held on tight. They, you know, they couldn't force her to stop from picketing, but she had to go south. One last stab, and she's going to Detroit to pick them one more time. Head office. Well, she gets to Detroit in the head office, and within no time, they're out front. Now, she's got the lemon up there, OK, with the fork out front. Anyway, yes, madam, come inside, please. Anyway, they agree, yes, we will let you have your new car. It's sitting over in Windsor. You're going to leave this one here, OK? Is that OK with you? So they gave her a brand new $25,000 charge, a brand new, so they could keep the ones with the one. That was an interesting win. Uh, win. So my mom got nerve. I posted a video at the CBC. I posted the video from TV Ontario where she's explaining how she went to the bank to borrow the money to send me to Vegas, but it paid off. And then in 2005, I had a video when we had a protest for, and there she is sitting in front of the Toronto City Hall with her big legal marijuana sign. <laughs> and I said, I think she's got the Guinness record oldest person for a legal marijuana sign. Anyway, activist, you know, she ran in 1984 against uh, Lloyd Francis, who became the Speaker of the House. And then in 1993, helped found our abolitionist party and ran against Paul Martin. Heard of him? Became Prime Minister. So anyway, she was active. And the one line she, I loved best was in 84 when she held up our Let's Disc. And she said, I don't understand how my fridge takes electricity and makes it cold. And I don't understand how my oven takes electricity and makes it hot. And I don't understand how this program takes credits and makes people part of the time. But I believe it in the same way. So anyway, she was a stalwart supporter of getting rid of the loan sharks. And now back to the Mayan prophecy. It's either bad news by next year, really bad, and what could be worse than this hell, right? To 90% of the world, forget you guys. You got food and probably a job. But 90% of the world are tenuous, you know what I mean? Lose their job and they don't eat for a while unless food stamps are really good. So understand that the rest of the world is up to here and like no money and so easy to go under. So it's not so scary with you. So the change, here, you want an interest-free credit card? What would you do with it? After you've stabilized all your debts, would you go out and buy a machine, get into business? Would you, or just go to Florida and spend it? And I don't care. I don't think mom did either. Because there aren't going to be that many bones who die in the negative compared to the winners who produce good stuff and die in the positive. So I'm willing to trust everybody, interest free, go negative. And I just park your debts, you know, just don't even look at that account no more. Rent's coming in, just 
Park it. Don't look there no more. Just concentrate on production, not consumption. Consume if it's there, but don't worry about the cost. That goes into that account. You just concentrate on production. So I think that Adelard, who carried the 160 pounds of blueberries, who had a brilliant inventor's mind, brilliant enough to duck World War I anyway, too, you know, carrying out the blueberries, and Mama, who uh, understood that ethos and passed it along. Anyway, I'm proud of Mama. She took great care of me, and I hope I made her last days as enjoyable as possible. And the last jokes she remembers were Well, of course, the last twinkle in her eye of victory, you know, was Bruce winning his case. That's the last time she could go yippee in her life. And then again, finding out that I made the millions of one bet with the rookies in Britain. Now, here's what's going to happen over the next year. As more people realize that, wow, Fixing the world's money system is just software reprogramming. That's worth a million to one. Now they're only going to pay you half a million max quid. So go bet 50 pence. Where else are you going to get a million to one bet? Anyway, that opportunity is now available. And at some point, after the second guy makes a bet, and the third and the fourth, they're going to start lowering the odds. All right, until all of a sudden they're not going to be so happy giving away high odds when more and more people are saying, gee, it's really not that hard to fix the planet's money system. You know? And it's only the damn chips that are screwed up. Nothing else. Machines all work fine, buses, technology, everything else works great except money. Software. And we don't even have to fix the hardware of the money system. Just the brain, not the machine. So mom was a true believer and I want to say goodbye tonight, Mom, and I'm going to say that this is the year of the mining prophecy, and you saw it coming, at least. And you saw a bet on it, too. Thanks, Mama. Bye. So I've lost one of the greatest allies possible, someone who proofread all of my official documentation for years and years, and I'm going to miss her. And she was a wonderful mom, took great care of us. And I hope I took great care of her too.